Now, again, this is something that all churches agree on, all Christian churches, that Jesus is, in fact, God the Son who became man. He was the one who was conceived in the womb of the virgin. He took to himself our nature. He actually became a man. The reason why he became a man was so that he could die for the sins of his people, so he could have their sins laid on him on the cross, and he could pay for them all. You see, as God, of course, he could not die. But the wages of sin is death, the Bible says. And all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are the ones who owe the debt. And so in order to pay the price, he became one with us. But of course, he also had to be God in order to make a payment that would be great enough to pay for all the sins for all those whom he was going to die for. Now, justice would say that perhaps an ordinary man might be able to take the place of one other man in God's judgment, one for one. But this one actually dies for a number, a multitude, which is so great that no man could number them. Now, how could God be just and give just one ordinary man for, to pay for that particular, pay that particular price? Well, the fact is, God couldn't be. That's why Jesus had to be more than just a man. He had to be more worthy than a man. And as God, he is infinitely worthy, which means the sacrifice that he makes is actually able to pay for the sins of an infinite number of people because of his infinite worthiness. So he had to be man to die, but he had to be God so that the value of his death would be great enough to make the payment. 